Hello and good morning. Hey, Arrow. Hey, Arrow. How you doing today, Matt? Doing awesome. Excellent. Dude, I can't believe this is season 16. Why, my God, the years are flying by. It's crazy. I mean, uh, as someone said, like, our, our little baby can drive now. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I got to give you kudos on something here. From one broadcaster to another, your storytelling capability when things are so unpredictable in front of you are just amazing. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. You know, it's something we've worked hard on and had a lot of practice with. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I think with Ninja, that's really what it is. And, and, you know, with every show, really, you're telling a story. And I think Ninja Warrior does that in these bite-sized moments of these runs. Um, and then figuring out, you know, what's the story going on overall. And, and it's really fun, I think, you know, having been on the show now, we're in season 16. I've known some of these ninjas, you know, well over a decade. We've seen marriages. We've seen, you know, babies we've seen struggles and, and you know the loss of loved ones and it really this community has come together and it's so gratifying to to feel like i've gotten to be a part of this and to you know these what these what the past of these adults have gone so far beyond the show to you know this is a sport it could be in the olympics yep. it's it's amazing. So it's it's always fun. Uh, summertime's a good time for Ninja Warrior. Dude, I was going to talk to you about the Olympics because breakdancing was allowed to go in there this time around. Yes. I think you've got to be able to go in there the next time. I I, I love it. So I've been doing my homework for, for the Olympics, and it's uh, called breaking. They said that yeah, breakdancing yeah. is redundant. <laughs> it's so funny. They're like, it encompasses so much more than dance. I'm like, oh, I love this. <laughs> and I was watching, like, we've got – the U.S. has the number one favorite guy, this guy B-Boy Victor, and uh, it's incredible. But anything can happen in a throwdown. And so uh, I can't believe breakdancing is in the Olympics. I just <laughs> – I mean, I grew up in the 80s. I remember having cardboard and trying to do windmills, and now <laughs> it's an Olympic sport, so – it's uh, it's nuts, and I love I love learning about the athletes and you know reading their backstories and it. I, I, it's kind of like Ninja Warrior, like you know these little the passion of these athletes has grown. This thing started from back in the seventies. So, but really, when was the last time that a show like this had the continuation of those that are being challenged on the show? In other words, I mean, I remember on American Bandstand, you always wanted those dancers to keep coming back year after year after year, and that's what I love about American Ninja is the fact that they're coming back. It's, it's crazy, and that's what's really been fun is seeing someone like David Campbell who's competed yeah. in every season, who's now three times older than our youngest competitors because we have 15-year-olds on the course. And it's it's just insane to say, like, you know, when it started in season one, he was the only person in the country who had a backyard obstacle course that we do of. <laughs> and now, you know, you can't yep. go anywhere in America without being in about an hour or so of a, of a ninja gym. And so... It really is cool to see them, you know, really passing the torch to this next generation. And, you know, Arrow, it reminds me of MMA where, yeah. like, I remember the first one was in Denver. And it literally was like a boxer and a sumo wrestler uh, and a karate expert. And, and and they were all kind of these people who came from their sports and then learned other disciplines. But then in MMA, you saw what happened when there was a generation that grew up training MMA that did jujitsu and wrestling and striking and all of it. And that's what's happened with Ninja because the athletes now, they grew up as Ninja Warriors. Mm -hmm. And it's insane because, you know, I follow all of them online. I see, see their training and they are so good. They challenge themselves so hard that we really... We struggle to design courses that can keep up with these, <laughs> this next generation ninja athlete. But see, that's the fun of it, because doesn't that make you also a student, not just the announcer or the play-by-play -play guy? You, you have to be a student to know where it's growing. Exactly. And that's what's fun, though, is, you know, with social media, it's so great because I follow them. And a lot of times when they do a crazy move, they'll tag us in it. And it's, it's so fun getting to go in there and chime in and. Just say like, oh man, our you know our and, and like our obstacle designers see this too, and they see like you know we created a tough obstacle last year, uh, you know or Duck Duck Goose or one that Sam Folsom created, and then all of a sudden you're seeing them before the season like before the seasons aired, the ninjas who competed on it have built it in their gym, yep. and now you see them conquering it and making it harder, and it's like. Oh God, we can't have that obstacle next year because they figured it out. <laughs> it's just incredible how how creative and how determined these athletes are. It's it's so fun to come up with challenges and to think we got them, and then you see them like figure it out, and it's 
it's almost like a a, a, a scientist going, they they solved our problems. They're coming for us now. <laughs> You're going to think I'm weird for bringing this up, but in a really weird way, is this show not Evil Knievel 2024? I mean, you know, your mouth to God's ears. I was lucky enough to get to do Evil Live for the History Channel where Travis Pastrana recreated Evil stunts. And there was something about that daredevil, that guy who said, you know, it's impossible. He goes, well, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> and I, we always think that with Ninja where, like, we create these courses that you just think they can't do it. And these athletes will launch themselves, launch their bodies. And, you know, we're very fortunate in that our athletes are so well-trained in our – our course designers do a job to try to keep it safe. But, you know, <laughs> these athletes, they are hurtling their bodies, yes. you know, sometimes 20 feet uh, in the air trying to catch them with just fingertips. It's insane the strains they put on their bodies. And, you know, they're not breaking 200 bones like Evil Knievel, but <laughs> but it's similar. It's in Vegas. There's a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to see. God, I would love to put microphones in several different homes to find out how many curse words we say while you guys are sitting there telling this story and why you're not cussing uh, right along with us. Well, I, so that's what I always say is, uh, you know, I, listen, I think I'm a tremendous announcer, but I realize all I'm doing is the same stuff you're doing at home. Like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> look out. Oh. It's, I mean, it's so funny. Like someone pointed it out. You guys say the same thing every time somebody falls. It's no yes, it every <laughs> time because it's just this visceral reaction where it's like, you know, what's cool is we don't have to be neutral. We're, you know, this isn't like we're calling the Cowboys and the the Green Bay Packers yeah. and you have to appear to be neutral. You know, we're we're fans. We're cheerleaders. We want every person to do as well as they can. And we're invested in them. We've studied their backstories. We've talked to them. We know what they've sacrificed. We want them to do well. And when they fail, it, it's just like your heart breaks for these athletes. And so, it, but it's what makes it special. My mom always says, it's like, I hate watching people fall. And I said, but mom, that's why when they hit the buzzer, it means something. Mm -hmm. Like you don't get another try. It, you know, if you hit a buzzer, you really have accomplished something. And, and that's what the athletes love. They don't want it to be easy. They want it to know if they did it, if they got a buzzer, if they got through an obstacle, that, that it meant something, that that was hard. And so that's the beauty of it is, the athletes love the challenge. You know, with that medical degree that you have, how do you also keep in that seat when they do fall like that? Because you know they've got to be hurting. Well, we had a dislocated shoulder. Mm. This must have been back in season five or six. And they're like, uh, Eisman, can you help? Yeah. And I go, oh, my God. It's been <laughs> and fortunately, one of our competitors was Noah Coffin, who was an ER doc. He handled that. And since then, we've gotten a lot better about having – like trained paramedics, you know, we've learned like you have to have some real specialists there. And, you know, I, I, I am, I'm at this point, I'm utterly useless, but we've been very fortunate. We've, we've only had, I think, you know, I think three or four compound fractures in 16 seasons. And when those happen is when I'm really like, okay, my, it's been way too long. I am utterly useless. Get the real doctors in here. Let's be honest about one thing with the listeners, and that is is that now during the Olympics, there's going to be a two-week break. But I think the strength of, of, the, of American Ninja Warrior is the fact that, you know what, we're, we're still going to be there no matter what. But I think that listeners need to understand that there's going to be a break, but hey, my, Matt's going to be back. Well, that's what's great is, you know, first of all, I think the ninjas in the Olympics share a lot of the DNA about, yep. you know, kind of these everyday people doing these extraordinary things, these people who aren't doing it for hundreds of millions of dollars, but I'm going to be lucky enough. I'm going to be covering the Olympics with the gold zone channel. So it, you know, Peacock NBC, this is the most ambitious Olympics ever. There are 396 medal events. You're going to be able to watch every single one streaming or live uh, on broadcast. And so it is going to be, there, there are sometimes as many as 40 events being contested at once. Yep. I'm going to be hosting the gold zone channel with, uh, Andrew Siciliano and Scott Hansen, who you might know from the Red Zone channels for the NFL, we're going to be giving you nonstop action, all the big events live as they're happening on Peacock. So, Ninja, it'll be a little break. I'll be giving you live Olympics that will come right back for the finales of Season 16 on Ninja Warrior. It's going to be a banner summer for Matt Eisen, Ninja, and Olympics. But see, you know, Matt, you know we're going to be tuning in just for you. You're that guy. We, well, we, that's what I say. But yeah. it's I appreciate you saying that. It's Look, I, here's the thing. I'm so excited to get to do it. I love, you know, we got to do Tokyo and Beijing and I love the Olympics for the same reason I love Ninja. You know, for so many of these people who are doing these events, skeet shooting or, you know, archery, like this is it. This is 
their life's work. This is the one time they get the spotlight on them. And to do it, not just for yourself, but for your country. Mm -hmm. And especially at a time where, you know, it's just, there's so many, there's so much chaos in the world right now. It's great to say like, hey, let's settle things on the playing field. Let's settle things with sport. And so, you know, I think it's it's what we all could use right now. Yeah. Um, just a relief of, of normalcy and of people settling things, you know, through physical struggle where, you know, the thing that's usually getting hurt is your ego. <laughs> and, and, and that's the announcers when I try the course mostly. <laughs> but I, I, I'm just looking forward to the summer, and, and I think people could use a little Ninja and Olympics. Side-by-side -side racing back again? It's back <gasps> again. I love it. It is Me edge too. of your seat. These athletes push themselves, and with – What's so great is that's really how these ninjas are training now with so many of these other leagues is speed. And, you know, <laughs> that is something that's always been a part of ninja. And now we're really kind of, you know, letting these ninjas go, go head to head. And it's it's great. Oh, my God. I just can't imagine where their imaginations go because I mean, they've got to get into that zone right now. Once once it starts, you got to go. It's, you know, and I think that's one of the things you, you really hit on arrow that we talk about the physical stuff, but to me, the great ninjas, what, what separates them is the mental game, that ability to, yeah. to turn it on and to be like, Hey, you're running at four in the morning and you just watch six people fall. You got to figure it out. It's cold. You're tired. You know, where's that internal fortitude? Where's that ability to say, I'm exhausted. I don't have anything left. And then to say, but I'm going to find it. And I, I look at Jesse Flex Lebrecht. She's the, you know, has more buzzers than any other woman. I think <laughs> mentally she is tougher than any other competitor. Cause there were times where I saw it. I saw her body be done, but I saw it in her eyes where she's like, Nope, I refuse to quit. And just finding that extra gear. And I just, I love watching, you know, it was like Michael Jordan. Yeah. When you saw all of a sudden someone, you know, piss him off and him get mad. And you're like, <laughs> Oh, you just awakened the giant. And I love seeing that. I love seeing when people find that extra gear as a competitor, you know, as an athlete, I was a nice guy. I only found it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, but I love like our great athletes, you know, they, they find a way to, 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 to push themselves and do things that, you know, even they weren't sure they could do. And, and those are the moments that I think we all recognize it. You know, it's why we love the movie Rocky, but this yeah. is real life is when you see like that underdog go, Hey, here's your chance. That M and M moment. Like, what would you do with your one shot? And when people make the most of it, there's all of us that kind of cheer and go, wow, that's, you know, that's kind of, they got to be the hero. And, and we love that. I think that's something so fundamentally American, that story of, Hey, you know, with a little hard work and a little luck, you could do something incredible. Well, mentally speaking, don't you also disappear? Because you seem to be the type of personality that when it's showtime, all of a sudden, then the show is over. You're going, what the hell just happened here? Yeah. You know, and it's funny because, you know, we tape and obviously it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's not uh, breaking up rocks, but we tape all night, you know, sometimes wow. five or six nights in a row and, and, you know, you're yelling the whole time and it can get tiring. <laughs> and and Akbar and I, though, it's the same thing. We're like, we're only tired until a run starts. Because as soon as a run starts, both he and I, you know, we were athletes. He obviously a little more advanced than I was. But we both are there where it's like, hey, this is when something special could happen. And I think mm -hmm. we both, you know, we both love that. Because, you know, I, I was an okay baseball player in college. And, you know, he always says he was a journeyman NFL player we didn't get a ton of special moments. So the ones we got were, were meant a lot. And so I think we both love it. And so there is something about when the show happens, we both are there willing these people wanting it because selfishly too, we love it when we get a call, a special moment. Like we, you know, when Casey Catanzaro back in season six, got up the warp wall, the first woman ever to do it. We were losing our minds. We were like, Hey, this is something <laughs> special. And we get to be, a part of it. We get to be the ones describing it. So, you know, it's nice because we don't have to work out nearly as hard as the athletes do, but we still get to kind of share in their glory a little bit. Matt, come on now. Cause when you use your voice, the way you use your voice, you're using those lungs too. How are you keeping those lungs in shape? If you're doing this five so, nights a week, this is what's funny is I actually had to go to a singing coach yeah. um, because I was blowing my voice out in the first seasons. Cause I was just yelling the whole time and I had to learn how to do you know, like a rock screen. <laughs> I had to learn how to really like project from the diaphragm and drop the voice down. And, and it's interesting. Like I do singing or vocal exercises 
Uh, my my fiance is like, God, you think you'd be able to sing by now with all the exercises you do? <laughs> um, but it's fun, and, and it really is just that energy of, I I love it. I do strongman competitions, and it's the yeah. same thing when you're watching someone, you know, deadlift twelve hundred pounds, and you just, you know, what I love is it's energy, right? I, I feel like I get to, I, I'm always trying to impart my energy into the athlete and you know, on Ninja, they can only hear us on a few obstacles, but I feel like the people at home, I feel we're all willing them. We're all like willing these people to stay upright, to, to, to last, to have their grip last a little bit longer. Um, and so I feel like it's my responsibility to offer as much karmic and psychic and physical energy through my voice as I can. So are you like me then when it comes to using your diaphragm? There are times that I'll catch myself putting my hand on my stomach to make sure that I'm breathing from that diaphragm. Just because, I mean, if I'm up here in my yeah. lungs, oh, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna destroy my vocal cords. Yeah, it's funny. And, you know, I watch things like about Celine Dion, about yes. how she won't use her voice during the day. And, <clears throat> you know, Vegas is our toughest one. We'll do six nights in a row um, and maybe more for this coming season. And it's you know, it's just trying to stay hydrated and and uh, trying to sleep and and rest. But it's it's always funny as soon as the run starts, even if the voice isn't there, you're like, oh my god, it's, it's incredible. It's- you just do whatever you have to do to, to give the athletes the respect and energy they deserve. All right, here's a personal question, only because I'm from Montana and we used to run away to the Denver area all the time. Did you learn how to express your true energy because you would spend time at Elitch's hitting those da- those damn oh roller coasters? Oh, my God! <laughs> so I, I still have a stolen exit sign from the haunted house at Elitch's that's still in my childhood bedroom. Oh, I love the Elitch Gardens. My yes. God, I oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that place in Casa Bonita. Did you ever make it to Casa Bonita? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> the little Mexican restaurant with the cliff divers. It's it's funny. You know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone from South Park bought Casa Bonita and restored it lovingly. Oh and I'm God. hoping to get home uh, during my wedding. When I'm home uh, in September, I'm trying to... Uh, Get a special trip to Casa Bonita going. Oh my God, you lead such an exciting life. But I'll bet you when you when it's time for you to rest, you're going. God, I lead a boring life. I mean, what what is it? I mean, how do, how are you able to be so open? And yet, what is it like to be Matt at home? Well, I you know it's it's funny. My uh, I, I'm very lucky that I get to travel a ton. Yeah. I was just in New York. We were doing promo for the Olympics. Um, and before that, I was in Vienna and Italy and then Miami. And so I, I, I travel a ton with work. We're going to, you know, we're, we're going for the Olympics in a week. And then, uh, I'm in Denver. It's, it's, I would say, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't feel like work is that hard for me, right. you know, other than the long hours, like it's, it's so fun. I, I love what I do. And I love when I get to travel, honestly, time off for me is just sitting at home. I've, I've got, this is the first weekend I've had at home this summer where I haven't wow. been traveling. And so, and it's just spent, I've got, you know, 200 sheets of paper in front of me for the Olympics <laughs> for my Olympics homework and just getting ready for that. So it's, it's one of those things that I honestly, I don't like it to slow down. Yeah. I love work. I love traveling for work because the stuff I'm getting to do is it's bucket list stuff. You know, yeah. it's, covering the olympics it's going to host a climate summit in vienna with schwarzenegger it's God. you know it's it's just i'm i'm very lucky and i'm always one of the things that i always try to do is just periodically stop take a moment you know i was in with uh keenan thompson yes. who's been on snl forever and we're just you know we're promoting he's doing the olympics with kevin hart and i'm doing the gold zone and i'm just sitting there with him we're on top of 30 rock and uh, we, you know, we were both like all right, this is pretty cool right now. <laughs> and it's fun to just take those moments and go, you know what? I mean, with everything going on in the world right now, just to be like, hey, let's slow down. Let's appreciate right now things are pretty good in my life. I'm getting married in September. Like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky right now. And just try to enjoy it because you never know when the ride's going to end. So I'm just enjoying it as long as it goes. Well, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Matt. The door is always going to be open for you. I appreciate it, my friend. It's uh, a good time. I appreciate it. Let me talk about Ninja War and get people hyped up for the Olympics. Well, you be brilliant and be safe, okay? God, I love it. I love it. Positive talk here, Errol. Thanks, my friend. You do the same.